Hello and welcome to Five of the Week. We are coincidentally in our fifth episode right now. We are a weekly recap show discussing topics around the NCAA on the SBA forums. Uh, the show is co-hosted by me at Okocha Star and Danger Golding, the uh, GM, the AD of the West Virginia Mountain. As always, we have five topics this week, um, a select five, not the exact five of the week. So our first topic of discussion would be the Gonzaga Bulldogs and their keys to winning basketball games. The Gonzaga Bulldogs hold a 13 and five record for last week, including back-to-back W's over the Shockers, a blowout victory at Villanova, and what do you know, a loss to the Mountaineers. They end the week uh, going 8-2 to in their last 10 games, holding the best form in the nation. Well, uh, the Bulldogs have been a great team this season, and uh, to be honest, it's a bit surprising getting this uh, getting the win against the Bulldogs, especially when the Gonzaga were at home on that game. But we had some great production from the, the centre spot in Ivancic versus Prime. It was a uh, a really good duel and really great one to see in the NCAA. Two very talented centers that will go into the draft facing off against each other. Uh, the Mountaineers came out on top that time and the uh, Bulldogs just slipped. They lost three in a row then uh, with a, a loss away at Texas and at Florida. But then they've been on an absolute tear the last few weeks. Get Running off a string of six wins in a row and then just one loss and another four wins in a row. So they've been a team that's really hitting their like final season form heading into March. Yeah, during their six-game win streak, they averaged 92 points per game and held Wildcats to 69 and the Bearcats to 76. So they're doing very well indeed. Uh, Mark Diareni Plandali is becoming a reliable option in a pinch, but it still seems like Robotastic Prime, the leading scorer in the nation, is the primary, secondary and tertiary option on offense. The point differential for this season as a whole is a very respectable 4.5, but they are top three uh, they are in the top third in turnover percentage and no primary guy to lead the defense with. Yeah, it's clear this team is uh, just an all-out, guns-blazing offensive machine, and that is all built around, the, obviously, the uh, scoring capabilities of Prime. So, well, they're going to stick to what works, really. All-out offense. They're a decent defensive team, but it's it's really not the side of the ball that they're going to be focusing on. Right, so that's our first one in the back. Uh, Gonzaga's keys to winning... To answer that question from earlier, looks like it's just going to be Robotastic Prime averaging around 44 points per game. So we'll move on to our second of the week. Uh, News from Duke University. They came into the season with a new athletic director in Allegiant, but now they've undergone a change in leadership again. Their new athletic director is... Mr. Splashman from the forums, uh, Duke have seemed to found form again and uh, are doing well, but so hopefully this change in management won't bring anything to debilitate that. Duke are 13 and 5 for the last week, a 10 point dif- net differential per game, and in their last five games of the week, they had a 62. Point two points against average. It's clear that despite the changing of the management, that Duke is still retaining their reputation for excellent defense. They're second in opponents' point per game. They're first in steals, and they uh, allow the lowest amount of. T- they force the highest amount of turnovers in the league. So this is kind of the uh, program that we saw when Shaka was leading the reins at Duke, and it's continued to be a. Uh, a focus for the program and it's working for them so far this season. 
you've got very balanced offense as well. Three players, uh, sorry, four players that are over 15 points a game. So uh, they're a team that's kind of uh, coming into better form towards the end of the season with a bit of a shaky play over the last couple of games, but I'm sure they'll get back into good form come March. It's obvious that the player development throughout this year has brought out the best of Duke so far. Uh, speaking of players, Miles Lefebvre uh, set a Duke college program single game record for assists. He had 21 helpers versus Syracuse in a 99-96 victory. How important is Miles to this Duke team? I think Miles is uh, one of the most impactful PGs in the league at this moment. And despite not putting up many points, only 8.8 a game, he really uh, enforces his will everywhere else on the court. One thing that people haven't really talked about is that this the point guard is averaging 8.2 rebounds a game along with his 11 assists. So that shows that he's not just a passing machine. He can get up and grab boards with the best of them. And uh, along with 2.3 steals a game. So despite not putting up many points compared to some of his peers, he's a, a really impactful player to have on the floor for Duke. And to go back to the rebounding aspect, uh, being only six foot five, and we obviously have some notoriously big men in NCAA currently, so grabbing those rebounds just extra effective. And another player making waves is a freshman guard, Leonard L. Church. Uh, he emerged as a scoring option, scoring with the with a good efficiency, uh, currently averaging actually a team high 17 points per game. Uh, he's been reliable th- so far this season and he'll only look to get better next year. On the recruiting front, Duke also added a point guard option for next year with the signing of Michael Agwu uh, to fill out their roster for next year. So, with adding Duke to the fold, we now have two-fifths of our five of the week. We'll move on to the UCLA Bruins and their hot streak. The UCLA Bruins Uh, had a record of eight wins and nine losses for the last week Like I said, it was a hot streak. Uh, They went seven and three in their last ten games At one point this season the Bruins held a 14 and 45 record and it must really be refreshing for the West Coast fans to have something to cheer about for the remainder of the season It's been a fairly dismal year for the uh, Californian fans, but Having a having a streak of good form is always nice to cheer your team on, get them a few more wins, and get that feel good factor in, especially for the young players on the team. Fortunately, the 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 run has kind of faltered a bit. They've they've actually lost what is that five of the last six of only a win away at the Hoyas to show. But I mean, it's a it's a developmental year for the Bruins, and I'm I'm sure they won't be too disappointed. Of their last week, they had a 119 to 116 win on the road over the Tar Heels and a 91 to 88 victory at home against Villanova. As they look to pull away from the Washington Huskies to reach a respectable record this season, their top scorer this year has been power forward Chase Clouds, averaging 23.5 points also adding in 7.1 rebounds and 2.5 assists. I think a uh, high spot of the Bruins season is going to be the uh, development of Primo Zajek. He's a a really up-and-coming talent, and I think he's going to be one of the people to look out for next season, definitely. Primo Zajek is top 10 in freshman points per game, averaging 14.8 and around six and a f- six and a half rebounds per game. So yeah, uh, excited for his development. Always good to see scoring and developing big men. I think it's time to move on to our fourth of the week, uh, which is a 
discussion about playoff contention and seeding uh, two teams who've been endlessly discussed on this podcast are still disappointing in their record and placement in the standings Michigan State Spartans and the University of Notre Dame Fighting Irish on paper fantastic squads but not everything is going right for them on the court Uh, what are their chances of upsets or proceeding in the first rounds of the tournament should they make it well I think obviously the uh, first team you're going to be looking at with the highest chance I think of upsetting a big seed is going to be the Spartans and that's solely because of the uh, possibility of their big man Hugo Nitt to just have an absolute huge game and score 45-50 points and that could push them over one of the top teams if he gets hot of course the uh, other team you'd uh, bet to have a good chance of an upset is the Fighting Irish we've seen big games from uh, both Hatfield and Zenglin so if we could see a if we could see a big performance from both of them in the same game, that's almost a certain win for the Irish, no matter who they're playing against. As both of these them can get really hot from outside and rain in some threes. The Michigan State Spartans are currently projected to finish 15th nationwide and look to be facing the Oregon Ducks, I believe. What do you give their chances in that exact matchup? Well, I think this matchup is going to be uh, quite difficult for them. They're going to be placing Hugo Nitt against some decent defensive bigs. So it's going to be it's going to be a question of if they can shut them down, really, rather than anything the Ducks have to do. Especially, they're they're just going to be focusing on locking down the paint and uh, making sure that Hugo Nitt doesn't get up to the the like 50s or whatever in scoring while the Ducks balance out with their superior talent and just get their points from Malone and Lamp. The Ducks are known as a tough, tough defensive team and they could provide instant problems for the Spartans. The Fighting Irish are projected currently to face Arizona Wildcats and while I think this matchup favors Arizona heavily, as you said, if both Hatfield and Sengline are really on their game and the perimeter defense holds up well, uh, they might be in for an upset, definitely. Uh, yeah, in, in contrast to the uh, battle of the big men that we'd see in the other match between the Spartans and the Ducks, this is going to be, a, if this match happens, this is going to be a real fight between the guards. Obviously on Arizona, we have some star players that we've heard of, Junior Jackson, Dante Zarazel at the point guard and shooting guard spots while uh, obviously the fighting Irish have their duo of sophomores so this could be a, a really interesting match to see with some very excellent perimeter play some of the, with some of the best guards in the league in the match a third team that is currently currently contending for play, tournament seeding is the Kansas Jayhawks they are 36 and 36 and Uh, are contending against the Spartans, Syracuse Orange and the Georgetown Hoyas. The gap has grown to five games now. They're in safety by those five games and they hope to also make another tournament run. All right, playoff seeding has been discussed. Duke has been discussed. Bruins, they also have been discussed and Robotastic Prime's Gonzaga Bulldogs are now in the bag. We'll move on to our fifth and final topic of today's discussion. It's the Freshman of the Year contenders. The award last year won by Finn Zenglein. Its frontrunners this season seem to be both forwards. Bobby Buckets from the Washington Huskies is a power forward averaging 21 points and five rebounds. Matthew Solomon from Indiana, a small forward slash power forward, is averaging 22 points, five rebounds and three assists. And the dark horse contenders right now seem to be 
Mark Diarini Plandoli from Gonzaga Bulldogs, and he's a shooting guard, averaging 14 and 5 and one steal per game. He's shooting with a 57.6 true shooting percentage rating. Only triumphed inside his team by Robotastic Prime, who does most of his work from the inside. And the final Dark Horse contender is also the aforementioned Leonard Church from Duke, a shooting guard averaging 17 points, 5 rebounds, with also a 1 soul steal per game. Uh, who do you think is the most likely to win the Freshman of the Year award, and who do you consider as the runner-up? Well, I think we're... The ADs seem to prefer picking players that are putting up solid numbers on better teams rather than the the freshmen that come into a struggling program with only a few good players and take over there. So it's a quite a tough one to see who they pick. I think my front runner would probably be uh, the shooting guard from Duke, Leonard Church. I think putting up the numbers that he's doing, 17 and a half points, obviously, on pretty good efficiency. Not to mention uh, adding 1.3 steals a game and almost five rebounds. So I think putting up uh, a solid contribution to a fairly high playoff team is going to be something that heavily influences the AD votes. Yeah, in addition to that, if... Like, well, like you said, uh, if Church also performs in the playoffs, that could also sway the public opinion. But the same goes for Mark Diarani Prandoli, as he is only growing and Robotastic is hopefully going to require some help in the tournament. Uh, it won't probably be necessary, but I hope he will require help for all of our sake. Uh, I think I should also be in agreement with you and the other speculated athletic directors that Leonard Church should win the award as his as his points per game averages are as I mentioned team highs and he has provided an element of scoring to a program that looked a bit without direction going into this season losing a lot of their star players. So that should be all for our five of the week this time around. A big thank you for Danger Golding for hosting. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to do it every week. Just wanted to give a, a end of podcast shout out to Deity of Ice to tell him that your Wildcats are definitely finishing lower down the Mountaineers. So I hope you have your copy paste ready for whenever you next have to do real NCAA hours. Because, uh, yeah, you're going to have to post that every single time. Regarding that, the race is currently 29 wins to 28 wins. But we are all rooting for the Mountaineers, of course. So, a big thank you to DD of Ice. And a big thank you to Danger Golding. And we'll catch you again next week. <laughs>